Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today I'm going to do a bit more of that front end remodeling that I'd always planned to do to the green machine. As well as a few plan modifications, I've also got to do a few repairs, so I'll show you those first. On the far side over there, you can see I've got a cleat there, and there was one here. And during a storm over about three days, the nut here got loose, so that's my bad for letting that happen. But once there was a little bit of play, it just started sawing its way through the hull. So I've got to repair that and fix that. Now, because that came off, I had uh, a line just attached to here, and this has also come off the hull, so that needs welding up. And then because all that failed, I tied from the wharf to the far side of the boat, but that meant that the boat would sort of rock this way, allowing this side to dip low, allowing this railing to then hit the wharf, and essentially tearing itself out of the deck. The other reason this happened is because I had cut this bar to give myself access from the front out onto the bow, which destabilized the whole thing, and I didn't get around to rebracing it before this happened. So my job now is to fix the sides, fix the back, get the cleat back on, then I'm kind of back to where I was, and then to build a dash unit that's going to come up and across over the dash, and then I'm going to have a brace that comes from this bar down there to stabilise this and stop this happening again. This is the bit of aluminium I bought to make that cross section. I got it from the local scrapyard for 20 bucks or something. So first job for me is to cut this and the plan is to use these edges to build edges on the sides here on both sides and then I'm going to have to sort of position it because this deck's got a certain contour to it I'm going to have to figure out the exact shape that it needs to be to sit level on the deck so that'll take a bit of work too. My plan of attack is to build this front section, what I, I think on the originally on the chalkboard I had it listed as the glove box because it's going to be somewhere I can put things into from the front of the boat. The reason I'm going to start with this first is there's no point fixing this uh, grab rail, windscreen frame, whatever you want to call it, until it can be braced to something and it can't be braced until this is in place. So this is where I'm going to start. Because this glove box section is going to come up and across and down, my plan was always to take out these old angle brackets and attach the nav lights to the side of that box. And when I lay this piece over, this is exactly the same width as the distance between these two brackets. So that's perfect. So that's the distance I'm going to make it. So I'm going to cut it straight down. Looks like it's already had a cut from before I bought it at the scrapyard. But I'll cut it straight down, straight down, and we'll use the full length across. I've got all the pieces cut up now and I've clamped one of the end pieces on here. It's going to have an end piece here and at the other end. And I've just used a block of wood at the moment. I did have some corner clamps, but they're actually magnetic so they don't work with aluminium. First step's going to be just to tack it in a few places and then I'll run a bead along it. It's pretty thick aluminium, I'd say about uh, probably four or five millimetres thick. So I think I'll be able to use a fair bit of heat and it's pretty clean and new. So I'll brush it up, see if we can brush some of this oxide layer off the top here, a bit of acetone and get going. It's been a few days now since I was last working on the Grimshing. I had a bit of a cold at the time and the welding wasn't going well so I didn't see the point in filming me just being grumpy. Um, I'll show you what I got up to though and we'll push on today. I've got this top glove box section on now, so just welded the edges along here. I welded it onto the deck, but it's the classic thing with welding. The actual technique of welding is not that hard, but it's all the finer points. And in this case, it was a bit of heat management. Even with small tack welds, this thin deck tries to expand, 
and it either wants to pop up or pop down. It can't go up because this glove box is blocking it. So it drops down. So I ended up with a series of almost like little columns where the deck had come away. So I filled this with a bit of sticker flex, which I'm going to sand before I paint. So you won't really see it and it seems quite strong. So that part was okay. This aluminium has got a very hard oxide layer, worse than the boat itself, surprisingly. So I needed to scrub this better than I did, which meant it was very hard to get a puddle on it. So I'm going to keep working around here, which is the support post up to here and finish working around here. So they're a bit ugly. But I got the lights moved from their brackets onto the side of the glove box here and then got some U-bolts here where my mooring lines attach when they're not in use. So I'm kind of happy with how neat that turned out as well. In the middle, hopefully you can see under here, this was a bit of angle, which I've riveted through the deck here. I'm going to do a couple of tack welds on the bottom here to stop it moving. It doesn't move at all even when it's unwelded, but just to be on the safe side. And then I'll probably do a bit of sicker flex here before I paint as well. So I'll push on with the welding now, and then when we're finished, I'm going to start making the grill for the front. Finally, Dave and Arne have gone home. They've been working on an old uh, Land Rover 1957 Series 1 there, restoring. So uh, it was a bit noisy to sort of film properly, but uh, I'll show you what I've got up to. I've got the glove box painted now, and it's pretty much dry. I was hoping to find a brighter green, but that'll do. You might notice I didn't go to great lengths to make it amazing. I'm not gonna paint the whole boat, so I haven't bothered taking the light up and doing the whole thing. Next step with the painting is going to be to mask this up and do black on the deck. So I will sort of bring all that and clean all that up as black. I won't go right to the front either. Much to some of your horror, no doubt, but you know, is what it is. So I'll just get a lot of this green over spray off when I do the next black coat. But what I'm doing now is I'm welding up a frame so I can put a grill in the front here. So this is what the frame looks like. I've almost finished it. Welding is pretty boring to watch unless you're actually being taught it and I'm the last person who should teach anyone how to weld so I won't even try but I'll finish this frame I'll do a few test fits in here and then I'll start cutting the grill for it it's a little bit of a tight fit but I think I can squeeze it in what I'm going to do now is just grind these front welds off it's going to go this way get them smoother and then just do some etch primer coats and some black coats on this then I'm going to cut this mesh which I'm going to put on the front. It's not quite as long as this, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to put a join somewhere. I'll probably try and do that in the middle so it looks a bit more symmetrical at least. You know, less of two evils, I think. While the etch primer dries on that frame, I'll mask up the deck and do that black. While I'm waiting for that paint to dry, we may as well have a beer and catch up on a few things. Uh, people have been asking about the Evinrude, so that's being machined at the moment. We're waiting for some pistons to arrive, so it's still gonna be a bit of a delay, but I definitely will be picking up on that motor. When I go to pick it up, I'm gonna do some filming at the machine shop. We won't necessarily get to film everything that happens with that motor specifically, but I will have a chat with him about his thoughts on what happened to it and I will also film the stages of the process in repairing that motor, if not necessarily on that motor. So we'll go through measuring it, um, skimming the head, boring, whatever. So, so that'll be, I think, a video on its own right. And then I imagine there'll be two or three videos on putting it back together. If you wanna follow along on that kind of stuff as it happens, I've set up a bit of an Instagram account for more sort of regular blog type posts in between the videos. So subscribe to that if you wanna keep up with those things. Oh yes, people also ask about t-shirts, so I'll put a link in the description, but you can get t-shirts from dangamarine.com.au, the website, it's just an online store where you can find them in the apparel section. What else was I thinking of? Um, I think that's about it. I definitely will be doing some more of those ignition timing videos though. So next thing I wanna try and get something like uh, maybe a Yamaha CV, they've got uh, mechanical 
timing advance. So once you get one of those, we'll go through using the timing light as well. So that's definitely on the horizon too. All right, I'll wait for this paint to dry and then we'll push on with this. The paint on this frame's touch dry now, so I'll cut this bracket, give it one more coat afterwards, and then we'll figure out a way to secure the grill to the inside of it. It's pretty soft and easy to cut this grill because it's made from powder coated aluminium, so it should be good in a marine environment and also pretty easy to work with. So there's the first piece. I'll do another one for the other side and I'll figure out where they overlap. I think I'll overlap in a small amount and I'll do a strip that covers the overlap, but I think I'm gonna run out of time to do that tonight. So, and I've got to put the boat back in the water so I can get home. So I'll, I'll finish it off and then we might have a bit of tweaking down the track. The nice thing about this is because it's quite flexible and slightly larger than the inside frame here, I can actually get it to stay reasonably in place by just pressing it up against the edges. What I am going to do though is put a bead of Sikaflex around the outside and weigh it down and use that to adhere it. I'm going to have to let this Sikaflex dry overnight. So I'll start putting the boat back together, put the nav lights back on, put those U-bolts back on. And tomorrow I'll flip this over once the Sikaflex is dried, probably give it another couple of coats of the black paint and then I'll install it on the water. So we'll pick up tomorrow and finish this job off. Morning. I've got the uh, grill installed now, so I'll give you a look. So that's what it came out like. I quite like it. I, uh, I was in two minds whether to block out the back of it to be completely waterproof, but I actually kind of like the idea that air can flow through there, because one thing you have trouble with enclosed sections on boats is they always get really damp and musty, so I kind of like that aspect. So far I haven't actually fastened the grill in at all, but I'll show you what I'm thinking. What I actually think you're doing is putting a bead of Sikaflex probably on the back side so you can't see it, or maybe neatly on the front here. Because you've got this angle that comes up, and there is a bit of a gap here, it's not a perfect fit, the deck's not flat, etc. And what it means is that any water that comes on the front deck here will hit here and won't be able to get inside this section. Obviously big waves would, but just water from rain, etc. will be kept out. And that I think is a nice compromise between having it blocked off and not letting water just flow all the way in. I'll need a bit of drainage in these corners probably if I do that, but that's no big deal. I can drill through this side here and have it come out the side. My original plan was to bring this grill forward a bit, which I still do like the idea of, um, and then having these bolts go through the angle line for the frame. It would secure it, I think it would look quite neat, so that's one option. But another part of me likes the idea of keeping it separate so you can remove this eye bolt without affecting the grill. So I'll make up my mind there still. So that's what it looks like from the outside. I'll show you inside. So now this screen's cut. I've got pretty good access out over the bow, which is what I always wanted. I'm thinking I might put a compass on top of here. And I think this is also a nice area under here to have like a fish finder screen or something so it's not in direct sunlight or in the rain. So I'm gonna look at what models will fit in the space that's there. Well, that wraps this video up. Not really a repair video, so apologies for that, but I did want to do this job and I knew if I did it, you'd want to see it, so. One quick thing I forgot to mention earlier when we were having a beer together was about comments. So if you comment and I reply, which I try to reply to everything, and then you reply to that reply, I don't always get to see it. The way YouTube works is um, you only get new comments at the top of the list and replies end up just sort of down the bottom. So I don't really get any notification that somebody's replied. So if we're having this sort of ongoing conversation and you don't get a reply back, just post a new comment and I'll see that at the top of the list again and we can sort of pick up the conversation. So I'm not kind of ignoring those replies. I just really have to go hunting for them to see them. So keep replying to the thread if it's kind of a quick conversation, but if it's been a while and you haven't heard back, just put a new comment. That's all I'm saying really. So the next steps for the green machine, I'll, I'll be doing a few more repair videos first, but when I do get back to this boat, 
I want to start trying to set it up for fishing a bit better. I've never been a, a huge fisherman, but I'm kind of keen to learn this summer. So I'm going to look at installing a bait board, some rod holders, that kind of stuff. So that'll be the next time this is in the shop. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, please rate, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. See ya.